Okay, so it's continue our talk. Uh, this is the coming to the you know, towards the end of our course slowly. So today we'll discuss uh, a class of matrices for which uh, diagonalization problem can be solved in a very nice manner. So we have been seeing some impor uh, uh, importance of eigenvalue problem and diagonalization, and this collection of uh, a collection of matrices a type of matrices for which a diagonalization problem it can be completely solved and in a specially nice manner and moreover these special matrices are very very often encountered in problems in engineering and physics and other sciences in fact this theory came from uh, problems of physics mostly so we'll see how so some important class of matrices uh, yeah this is what i said well understood and solvable. Uh, today we will give two, three definitions today. One will be slightly new and others will be just some order, some kind of repetition or extension of earlier definitions. So a new definition will always make a course heavy. I hope that uh, that does not happen because the new definitions are not totally new. Okay. So for this is the first one, complex at joint. So for, for any uh, matrix actually, and assuming the entries are complex, uh, we can define its complex at joint by taking its transpose. So we already know transpose. So a slight twist here, twisted transpose. So you take transpose and put conjugation. Now if the matrix has real entries, then no change will take place. So in that sense, it's a, not a very new definition. For real matrix, it is same as transpose actually, because conjugation will not give anything new. Conjugation means complex conjugation. So entries are from Aij, you make them Aij bar. So if Aij is real, then Aij and Aij bar will be same. There won't be any change. So it, definition is new, but only slightly new. The extension of transposition. So if A is Ajk, then A star is, you can write like this, A bar transpose or A transpose bar. You can take either transpose first and conjugate entries later or you can take conjugates first of the entries and transpose them later or you can do them simultaneously also where the operation is equivalent. So BRS is ASR conjugates. So if entries are real, we just get the transpose. Now this is important. Uh, we defined one adjoint earlier. We should not come confused with that because though it is called complex adjoint, uh, we very soon will start calling it adjoint. I just drop, suppress the complex, I like shortening names and all. Okay, so should not confuse adjoint A, which defined earlier, which was at transpose of the cofactors. Hmm? So this this adjoint A, then ADJ, is usually almost zero in practice. It's hardly ever used. But this new adjoint we have we are studying that is extensively used and common in all all textbooks and all scientists speak of adjoint. They mean this our star adjoint. So that this is, this is more important adjoint for us. So the complex adjoint. So uh, there are some uh, properties which satisfies. The properties are common with the mostly common with the properties of transpose. And uh, some of them, if you uh, writing these properties, may probably insult your intelligence. Any, but I am just writing it. So this is. These properties, they are sort of lot of sort of left unsaid. Then also, it's all they are obvious properties. So anyway, I list them for completeness. So multiply by scalar and then take transpose uh, or conjugate uh, adjoint. Then you'll get adjoint and then multiplied by the conjugate of the number. If of course if lambda is real, you get just usual lambda times a star. Is another simple one. You already have seen it. A B transpose is B transpose A transpose. So there is nothing new. Putting conjugation does not change anything. Again, same as before. Inverse of transpose is transpose of inverse. Here, inverse of adjoint is adjoint of inverse. And this is very important. If you take adjoint twice, you get back the same. So second one has because of conjugation. The first and second can be combined as lambda A plus mu B star is lambda bar a star plus mu bar b star. I am just saying it because we have seen this kind of things in uh, linear combination, linear span also. 
where we sometimes we say v plus w and a times v separately or sometimes just a v plus b w similar thing. So, almost like linearity, if it was lambda a star plus mu v a star, it would be linear. Lambda a plus mu v whole star plus lambda a star plus mu v star that will be linear, but here uh, it is twisted linearity, it is called conjugate linearity, that is you put conjugate. So, this first, first type is special matrices, so two, three kinds of special matrices we will define for square, eh, because you are talking about diagonalization problem. So, square matrices is called Hermitian if it equals its own adjoint. Now, this uh, matrix of this kind can also be called self adjoint by common sense, but here uh, common sense is uh, drop a little bit because uh, we want to honor a mathematician who studied the properties uh, very extensively and that mathematician his name is Harmit and not a Punjabi Harmit, but French Harmit. Uh, that is why it is called Hermitian matrix. So, spelling. So, to honor this uh, mathematician Hermit, we call these Hermitian uh, uh, matrices, of course, you can also call them self adjoint. So, okay, both are same. So, A star is equal to A can be called self adjoint, but to honor somebody we call it Hermitian. Okay. Of course, if uh, square matrix has real entries, then we all, there is nothing new, we already seen so called symmetric. A star will be just A transpose and that is a symmetric matrix. For real matrix, Hermitian means just symmetric. Hermitian already means symmetric for the real matrix. If you take complex matrix and take uh, symmetric ones, that is A transpose equal to A then you do not get this property of diagonalization, okay. That is slightly the tricky thing. If A transpose is equal to A for a complex matrix, then diagonalization, that property of diagonalizability can may not hold. That is why we need this Hermitian transpose uh, conjugation also. So, this is a simple exercise which is actually an observation. In a Hermitian matrix, the diagonal entries are real numbers because they will stay wherever it is, wherever they are on transposition and on conjugation should remain same, so should be real. Next is his skew Hermitian. Skew Hermitian I need not define, but anyway I will define because from the name itself you should know it is negative or joint. Okay. So, A star is minus A and of course, if matrix has real entries then it is called skew symmetric that we already know. Again the same problem if uh, skew Hermitian already means symmetric and skew symmetric for real entries, if, mat if entries are real and no need to define it separately. So, show that the diagonal entries of a skew Hermitian matrix lie in I R that is they are purely imaginary numbers. So, again same argument where the, on transposition the position does not change, but it should become its negative that is the diagonal entries conjugate should be minus diagonal entry, but such a such number complex numbers are purely imaginary. And of course, it follows if it was a real entries, if the entries were real that is skew symmetric then all diagonal entries will be 0, I suppose you already know that. In case of real entries all diagonal entries will be 0. And now this, this exercise will show that there is hardly any need to separately study skew Hermitian. So, there is hardly any need to study skew Hermitian. If you Hermitians are easy to study, they have nice properties. Skew Hermitian is slightly twisted because I A comes, but they are equivalent in some sense that you need if you study Hermitian that is enough, all the results can be obtained for skew Hermitian directly because of this property. A is skew Hermitian if only I A is Hermitian. And third is the unitary matrices, orthogonal unitary. So, n by n matrix is called unitary if it satisfies that is, is adjoint is its inverse and in case of real entries it is called orthogonal and it satisfies that transpose is its inverse. So, these, these uh, matrices are important for uh, diagonalization problem as well as they have very nice properties. If you have a suppose a real matrix which is orthogonal and think of it as a map from Rn to Rn then 
the main property is which we are not going to prove or anything is that uh, as a map from Rn to Rn it preserves the metric. So basically it is either some rotation about origin or some reflection only these two kinds or combination of them. So only rotation and reflections. So these are the only uh, linear maps which preserve distances in Rn. Okay. Uh, if you take a line segment of length so unit length and map it under the matrix A to uh, on the right hand side say to another it will go to another line segment because it's a linear map but length will remain one only. And likewise from here you can conclude that angles are also preserved. So these mat these uh, transpositions are like uh, congruences they are special special kinds of transformation orthogonal matrices that is why they are important we will see their use in the diagonalization problem later. So unitarity is slightly the so unitarity becomes automatically orthogonality for real matrices that's that goes without saying. So one simple exercise you can do is from here from definition itself you can see that modulus of determinant A is 1 if A is either unitary or orthogonal. So you take the defining equation, take determinant and then use the fact determinant of A transpose is same as determinant of A, also determinant of A conjugate is same as determinant of A conjugated, you do all, use all these properties then you will find modulus determinant A square equal to 1, you, you do it yourself that will be more uh, educational. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I put debt inside because if you put just modulus which has we have been using for determinant just uh, that two bars. So if I use that there will be some confusion. So modulus of the determinant so I put determinant separately. Can be complex for unitary and in case of real it will mean that it can be plus one or minus. So that is the reason that is if a, by definition you can see that the columns of the matrix A will be orthonormal on my orthonormal basis of Rn or C if in case of real this Rn and what about rows you can think about rows also. So before uh, stating the diagonalizability of this C actually diagonalizability of these matrices will not prove that is a that is a slightly tough term for this course which called spectral zone but it is so useful that we have to state it without proving. So any before that uh, diagonalizability we have to study eigenvalues. So first about these three kinds of matrices the eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices are all real because it is like A star is equal to A think of it as A bar is equal to A somewhat then you will see that A, a self uh, uh, is Hermitian or Hermitian or uh, self adjoint matrices they behave like real numbers in a complex plane A star is equal to A. So it is not surprising the eigenvalues of the Hermitian matrix are real. Then what about skew Hermitian? Skew Hermitian means i times the matrix is Hermitian. So all eigenvalues along the imaginary axis. Of course we need not study it separately but in a standard course these things are also <laughs> studied. Uh, separately uh, just for probably for reinforcing the idea. So here skew Hermitian matrices are in imaginary axis and unitary matrix the eigen will lie on the unit circle. We can keep in mind a very simple diagram. I do not know how to draw in computer so I could have drawn. Okay, so this is, a, this is how eigenvalues are sep, uh, uh, situated. 
say the unit circle in the complex plane. Proof uh, is not difficult. Suppose uh, lambda is an eigenvalue, then there will be an eigenvector. Everything now in Cn in general in Cn. In case you are in real case and the eigenvalue is also real, then you will be in Rn. Rn is also a subset of Cn. So we just write like. So what we get from here? You are multiply on the left by V star. That is at adjoint of V. So adjoint is defined for all matrices. Huh? or rectangular matrices. So, so, V star is a row with conjugated entries. V is a column and V star is a row with conjugated entries. So, what does uh, this imply? So, here I have written right hand side on the left hand and uh, left hand side on the right. There is a lambda V star V. V star is norm of V square. is V star V. By definition, now V square. What is these are, uh, these are conjugates, okay. So, these are just modulus of the conjugate numbers, uh, complex number, moduli, moduli of the complex number. So that is the right hand side no, lambda norm v square and the left hand side, so I have done a manipulation v star a is a star v whole star using the fact that a b whole star is v star a star, all right, like transpose a b whole transpose is b transpose a transpose. So here I have written a as, first of all a has been written as a double star, this a has been written as a double star and then one star taken outside and uh, order change inside. So this star is taken outside and order change it inside. So A star B whole star. So, so this, this, so this, these two I will change the order. So what we find is, uh, if, if it is admission situation, when A star is A, that uh, expression in the bracket is just A V, so A star is A. If you have a skew admission situation, then the expression inside the bracket is minus A V. And finally, if, the, if A is unitary, then the expression is A inverse V. So in other words, lambda no, uh, v star v because a v was so this is lambda v eh? in all of them this is lambda v and this will be 1 by lambda v this will be 1 by lambda v this will be lambda v this is lambda v that's so, that's how we started so so that's what i am doing first case lambda v second case lambda v the minus and third case lambda inverse and now we are true because we know v star v is norm v square. So lambda v whole star is lambda bar, this is conjugate linearity and then v star v is norm v square, okay. Lambda v whole star is lambda bar v star, conjugate linearity and minus lambda v of course is minus, minus lambda bar norm v square and other one is lambda bar inverse and of course v is, is an eigenvector, so eigenvector is not, not 0. So norm v square is strictly positive and, and uh, say non-zero, non, norm v square is non-zero so it can be cancelled. So you can cancel it from both sides, so you will get lambda is equal to either lambda bar or minus lambda bar or lambda bar inverse which means of course lambda is real or purely imaginary or of unit length, alright. So we have used only one manipulation, no? this one. You, you have to use this manipulation. This 
this is the only manipulation after rest is all uh, natural consequence for the calculation which suggest themselves and rest, rest of the proof is calculation which suggest themselves. Uh, this is the only place two are there one is multiplying by v star uh, this is first first uh, new idea and this is second new idea is just putting like this. So, two tricks are there in this problem in this theorem two tricks are there one is multiplying by v star on the left and other is writing it in a clever way. So, after that everything is natural the proof follows its own course you do not have to think. So, these all this follow directly because whatever you after first two tricks you have used then these things are natural consequences. Uh, so, lambda through lambda bar means lambda is real lambda through minus lambda bar means lambda is imaginary and lambda is equal to 1 by lambda bar you can take that on the left hand side and you will find mod lambda square is equal to 1. From here it follows that mod lambda is 1. third one is 1 by lambda bar. So, if lambda is equal to 1 by lambda bar that means mod lambda square is 1. Okay, so you can you read this as 1 upon lambda bar ok. Lambda bar inverse means 1 by lambda. So, let us see how to classify this and find eigen values. First we classify what is what about A Hermitian of course, it is <laughs> if it is known that it is one of these then seeing diagonal entry is real you can of course, know that it should be Hermitian maybe I should have put one which is does not follow any of these <laughs> ok. So, first one is Hermitian diagonal entries are real and off diagonals are conjugates of each other. Second one is Hermitian or entire real skew symmetry. Third one, third one is SQ Hermitian of course, it is revealed because diagonal entries are imaginary. So, it is you suspect SQ Hermitian and off diagonal are negative of z bar negative of the conjugate off diagonal is negative of the conjugate. So, that will make it SQ Hermitian. Then D is uh, SQ symmetric the counterpart of SQ Hermitian you can also call it SQ Hermitian there is nothing wrong in that it is also a skew Hermitian or skew symmetric and E, E is uh, it's unitary because you can see that uh, the columns are of length 1 because we said that for unitary matrices the columns will form an orthonormal basis in fact. So, at least orthonormality you can see the entries are i by 2 and root 3 by 2. So, in mod squares to sum you will get 1. So, both rows both columns have uh, vectors of length 1 unit length. So, actually the unit is unitary matrix, but you can also do it by taking its u star multiplying to u and then c i that is take a star of this multiply it to this and then you will get identity matrix. And likewise uh, f is also unitary and g is orthogonal. In fact, uh, this f is unitary as well as q Hermitian both both properties are there. unitary as well as q Hermitian. And sim, uh, similarly, this one it is orthogonal as well as symmetric both. So, if you want eigenvalues, you can see the first eigenvalues are 9 and 2, second ones they are all real, ok. First Hermitian case this is real, symmetric case also it is real, SQ Hermitian case uh, they are imaginary skew symmetric also imaginary because skew symmetric is part of skew Hermitian. So, that is why skew symmetric reals uh, not that useful because if you work, want to work in R n only then skew symmetric uh, if you want to solve diagnosis, diagnosis problem they force you to go outside reals because the eigenvalues are purely imaginary. So, they cause some difficulty so, you do cannot stay in R n and diagonalize is skew symmetric. Then unitary matrices you can see these are the eigenvalues and both are of modulus 1. Both eigenvalues have complex model uh, that is modulus as complex numbers is 1. Where real square plus imaginary square by uh, real square plus imaginary square is equal to 1. For same thing is true for orthogonal side f and g is orthogonal and symmetric therefore, eigenvalues have to be real 
as well as a modulus one. So, uh, have to be only plus one minus. In fact, uh, this one uh, is, is slightly interesting as an operator in R2, it is it is reflection about some some line, I do not remember which line. So, to know which line you have to find the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 1. So, I, I could have done it, but I have not Let's look at G. So, we have to do that uh, A minus identity business. So, uh, minus half this A minus identity, then you can uh, do this row reduction. So, multiply this by root 3 and add here, multiply by root 3 and add here you will get 0. Of course, if you want you can remove this uh, tools also. So, you get uh, x equal to root 3 y or y by or, or y y should No, I'm confused root 3 So, this uh, y is equal to root x by root 3, root 1 by root 3, I suppose is tangent of 30 degrees. So, this line here. So, all these vectors will will be fixed by A because I can all these vectors are eigen vector corresponding to eigenvalue 1. So, A B equal to lambda B. So, under A each vector will remain where it was, but what and then there is eigenvalue lambda equal to minus 1 and that will be this line orthogonal line. Why orthogonal? That I will not reveal now. So, this line is y is equal to uh, minus x y root 3. Oh sorry, uh, y is equal to minus root 3 x. So, along this line a vector will go to its negative. So, all the vectors here will go to its negative and all the vectors here remain same. So, overall effect is the plane is reflected about this line. So, general vector its a component here will remain unchanged and component here will go on the opposite side. So, correspondingly this uh, point will go to it is reflection about the line. So, this operator operator A, A as a matrix when it acts on R2, it reflects the plane about this line y is equal to x by root 3. So, that is the effect that is. Uh, so, so what happens uh, when, when it is just a pure reflection automatically all distances are preserved. If, if, a, if two points are certain distance apart and it is their images will also be same distance apart. So, it is reflection. So, the, that is the importance of this orthogonal thing. They do not, uh, they keep the distances unchanged. So, it, the figure, any figure will go to a congruent figure. So, that and that is the property of orthogonal, orthogonal matrices. In general, they will send figures to congruent figures in R and R. Next, we come to the study of eigenvectors. So, we have seen in uh, general matrices if there are different eigenspaces and you take ve eigenvectors from different eigenspaces then they form a linearly independent set. One of the theorems was there. I different eigenvectors from different eigenspaces if you take and put them as a set you get a linearly independent set. More precisely it was if V1 is from E lambda 1, V2 is from E lambda 2 and Vk is from E lambda k where these lambda is are distinct numbers then this v1, v2, vk form a linearly independent set. We, we start with non-zero ones of course, non-zero vector. So, for special matrices of course, it has to be true, but we have much stronger property and much, much better property. So, what is that? 
orthogonality. If you take different uh, vectors, eigen vectors from different eigen spaces in case of special matrix namely Hermitian, skew Hermitian or unitary, then the vectors will be mutually orthogonal. That is the set V1, V2, Vk, any two vectors will be orthogonal to each other, mutually orthogonal, which is much better than just linear independence. Okay, we, we already know that an orthogonal set is linearly independent. This is simple exercise we saw along with. So, if you have distinct eigenvalues of a special matrix and that V1, V2, Vk be a choice of corresponding eigenvectors in Cn, let us work in Cn. So, you can work in Rn. If, if, if things are available in Rn, you can work in Rn. Then it is an orthogonal set in Cn. So, in other words, the inner, inner products are all mutual inner products are 0 and j is not equal to L. Vj, Vl is 0 with j is not equal to L. Of course, if, uh, if you are, if eigenvectors are available in Rn, then Vj star is a Vj transpose and that is the standard inner product. This is called unitary inner product of Cn. So, for that we need a, a lemma. If A is a special matrix and there is an eigenvector, eigenvalue A B is equal to lambda V, then same eigenvector is also eigenvector for A star. That is an important fact. We have seen before a for in for general matrices, A and A transpose general square matrices. They have same eigenvalues, but eigenvectors may not be same. That that was a problem. One of the problems also we solved. We found that eigenvectors are different. But for special matrices, that prop that uh, problem is also not there. If you have an eigenvector, that will remain eigenvector of its transpose or actually adjoint, not transpose, A star. And again, this will not be true for A transpose in, in case of complex matrices, but only for A star. So, the A transpose in complex matrices is a not a very welcome <laughs> operation. So, proof is uh, like we proved our uh, nature of eigenvalues, similar proof works. So, we already know that uh, the three special kinds of matrices are A, A star is A, A star is minus A or A star is A inverse. That will mean uh, in first case lambda bar is same as lambda, lambda bar is same as minus lambda and lambda bar is 1 by lambda respectively. So, A star V is equal to lambda bar V directly we get. So, same equation just read correctly that is all. Just reread this equation. If A star is equal to A, what it says is and the, in that case lambda bar is equal to lambda. If A star is A, lambda bar is lambda. So, this equation says A V equal to lambda V that is whatever is given it says the same thing. In case A is skew symmetric, uh, then lambda bar is minus lambda because uh, eigenvalues are purely imaginary we have seen, we have seen that. So, you reread this then A star will be minus I minus A on the left side and lambda bar will be minus lambda on the right hand side. So, what is saying is whatever just by multiplying on minus you will get that minus sign. So, actually these, these are equivalent and if A star is A inverse, then we know lambda bar will be 1 by lambda. So, all equations are the re restatement of the first equation actually in all cases. So, it is just rereading of the identity that lambda is real imaginary or of unit length. So, that proves the lemma. Theorem proof, uh, proof of theorem is uh, now direct. So, suppose uh, these are V1, V2, Vk, they are the eigenvectors with eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k. So, we have written A V L is equal to lambda L V L and L is from 1 to k that I have not written, but it is understood that L runs from 1 to k. Now, take another j different from L and multiply on the left by Vj star and now do the usual manipulations. So, you can write V star V j star A as A star V j whole star V L and right hand side as it is, but A star V j is lambda L bar lambda j bar V j uh, as from the lemma. So, again right hand side is unchanged. So, this this is from the lemma. Yeah, here this is from the lemma. A star Vj is lambda j conjugate Vj. Right hand side is unchanged yet. 
so that implies now again we are using the property that a b whole star is uh, there is conjugate linearity so lambda j bar vj star is lambda j lambda j vj star because of conjugate linearity right hand side is still unchanged but now since lambda j is not equal to lambda l that means vj star vl must be zero so what we have got is lambda j minus lambda l times vj star vl is zero and lambda j minus lambda l is non zero therefore vj star vj vl must be zero so that shows the orthogonality so if j is not equal to l that uh, inner product is zero so this is another problem uh, we did earlier i uh, will do it complete that is the first the problem a find the uh, i classify and find eigen value so now we are doing that problem as a illustration of this theorem so this is a hermitian matrix when you uh, proceed to find the eigen values and if you write the characteristic polynomial you can write the characteristic polynomial using that same trick of using trace and determinant so you, it will be uh, say lambda square minus trace trace is uh, 11 so trace <laughs> lambda square minus 11 lambda then compute the determinant determinant will be uh, 28 minus that length so minus that length will come so that we a uh, 10 so 28 minus 10 18 so plus 18 so you can directly write the characteristic for lambda square minus 11 lambda plus 18 is equal to 0 then from there you can see lambda 9 and 2 of course you can do minus lambda and take determinant so we can do it here for your benefit your characteristic polynomial so you can take determinant and <laughs> calculate either directly or by our tricks and the coefficient here will be always one coefficient here is trace trace is a uh, i mean for eleven and here the coefficient is determinant determinant is 28 and then this plus uh, minus 10 so you can do either way so you can see that eigen values are 9 and 2 and then you can find the corresponding eigen vectors so subtract 9 we'll get and do some row operations we'll get uh, this row regular echelon form and one of the choice will be 1 minus 3i 5 so here We have taken x to be five, so this is one of the choice. And similarly for lambda two, you can get this choice three i minus one two. And then v one star v two, that they are eigen vectors from two different eigen spaces. Uh, you must know that they must be orthogonal because it's Hermitian matrix. And uh, you can check also by taking the inner product or dot product. So dot product is v v one star v two. That is, uh, so v one star is five, and then comma one plus three i. Okay. So when you write v one star, it is a v one in the row form, but conjugated. So sorry, one plus one plus three i five. That's the v one star. One plus three i five, and uh, v two is of course uh, as it is. So one plus three i into three i minus one plus five into two, and that is. Zero. So I write here. Time is now almost over. And this is V two. V two is already there. So this times this plus this into this. That is the inner product, and that is zero. Of course, you can also check v two star v one if you want. It doesn't matter. V two star v one is what will be v one star v two. It's conjugate, and of course, uh, conjugate of zero is everybody knows what it is. 
think that's enough for today. Thank you.